Hollywood loves a remake, and these days it's more popular than ever to reimagine popular fairy tales as much darker stories. The last 10 years have given us movies like Snow White and the Huntsman, The Banana Splits Movie, Jack the Giant Slayer, Mirror Mirror, and Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, as well as every live action Disney remake, which is a little bit darker and a little bit crappier than their classic <laughs> counterparts. Just a little bit crappier. And speaking Burn. of beloved Disney characters, the tubby little cubby all stuffed with fluff known as Winnie the Pooh, first created by author A.A. A. Milne, recently entered public domain, paving the way for a horror movie slasher set in the Hundred Acre Woods. The movie is called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Let's take a look at the trailer. This place is kind of cold. Um, did you see how it's cool? We need to go. There's... The, the Laura's dead. There's someone else outside. What was that? Why are you doing this, please? I would have never left that swear, I swear. I love it. I love wow. it. I love it. I love it. What? If there's not a moment where he's just like the killer is ch or who is chasing after Christopher Robin and he's just not like Christopher Robin. <laughs> I just need it. I need it to happen right now. We're getting a lot of singing, singing from Scott today, which I, I am 100% here for. I don't know that was singing. Was there. that singing? It was but kind of like a <clears throat> I <type> thing. <laughs> the, if the tagline for this movie is now they're really in deep poo, then they are missing the boat. <laughs> Thanks for murdering me. <laughs> um, and this isn't the only classic children's character slated to get the slasher movie treatment this year. Um, XYZ Films recently announced the release of a How the Grinch Stole Christmas inspired slasher called The Mean One. Um, and so today we decided to look back on some of the TV shows, movies, books, and characters we loved as kids and picked a property we think could work as a horror movie remake. I am very excited about this. <laughs> Scott, do you want to kick us off with your with your choice? I would love to. Okay. Let's let's pull it up. Here we go. Ready? Double dare. But it's not double dare. Hear me out. It's double scare. And it's not a show that you want to be on, right? Think of it sort of like a cross between the running man and battle royale. Like, so here we go. In you a dystopian it. future, parents can send their wayward children to participate in a correctional television show where they are forced to compete in rounds of insane trivia and deadly physical challenges, all in the hopes of staying alive long enough to make it to the obstacle course, which, as you can imagine, is going to be its own special type of hellish nightmare. The giant mouth can actually like bite you in half, and the nose is full of acid instead of slime boogers. Um, again, like sort of like wipe out, but the obstacles are designed by Jigsaw. Like, is that like... Feel good for you guys, right? Yes. And I'm sure you're wondering, like, but Scott, what do they win if they collect all eight flags from the obstacle course what do they before win? time runs out? Girl, just calm down. I will let you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said you wanted us to <laughs> um, They win, drum roll, emancipation from their horrible parents that put them in this psychotic show, first off, as well as a lifetime supply of whatever fun size candy that they want and any cash and prizes that they've won along the way, naturally. Because uh, the producers aren't like total jerks, and they get to <laughs> and, and they get to keep their limbs. Exactly. Well, the ones that they oh, the ones they still are completing <laughs> the obstacle course. Um, so yeah, that's double scare. Oh, and it's hosted by Dark Summers. <laughs> Credit, please. Oh, uh, yeah, I came up with that myself. Shut up! <laughs> you did not. I came up with Dark Summers. <laughs> Allegedly, I don't know. I haven't, you know, I don't have anything in writing that says that. You know, you're I welcome love, to have your people talk to my people. But. I love the idea of these kids <laughs> being, um, being uh, like asked whether they want to. Well, oh, well, they were asked for something or the physical challenge. It was and dare, double dare, physical, physical challenge. challenge. They, they can pass yeah, a, take, a question back and forth if they didn't know it. Take the dare, take the physical challenge, and then having to go through that roller thing that flattens them out. <laughs> Or, yeah. or looking under a giant slice of pizza 
<laughs> or going down that terrible. slide into a big vat of acid. <laughs> under, a, uh, under a slice of pepperoni that has hypodermic needles in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that is double scare or double dare, if you will. I don't know. It depends. That would be my version of a game show if I ever had one. So, oh, yay, God. don't give me any uh, any ability to make a game show. And just, before so we go any further, uh, we're going to require producer credits. Uh, if oh, anybody yeah. takes these ideas and runs with them, just uh, just to protect our interests. That's well, fine. I got that. Yeah, Someone it will absolutely, I'm telling you, make the movie that that I'm that I have an idea for. And my next pick, it was inspired by both the 1990 comedy Problem Child and the 2009 horror movie Orphan, which both told stories of parents whose lives were turned upside down after adopting nightmare children. And I would love to see a dark horror remake of Alvin and the Chipmunks. Think of it more as Problem Child meets Gremlins or the Santa Claus. <laughs> and the idea would be... On Christmas Eve, single father and struggling musician David Seville is chopping down his Christmas tree in the forest of a local witch doctor when he realizes he's cut down the home of three adorable chipmunks. He thinks, I can't leave these baby chipmunks to die, and it might score big points with my kid if I bring home these chipmunks as pets, because Cheryl bought them a PS5, so I have to compete with that. It'll be a great Christmas surprise. The kid names them Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, but when they wake up on Christmas morning, the chipmunks have now suddenly doubled in size and are wreaking havoc on the house. The chipmunks continue to grow at an alarming rate, becoming anthropomorphic, and innocent shenanigans quickly turn into murder as they wreak havoc on their small town. Alvin! <laughs> and to stop the chipmunks, David Seville must track down the reclusive witch doctor and learn the secrets of his powerful spell, ooh-ee, ooh-ah-ah, ting-tang, <laughs> walla-walla, bing-bang. I'm still workshopping, uh, I'm still workshopping titles, <laughs> but I'm thinking of either Alvin and the Chip Massacre, <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks Go Nuts, or Alvin and the Chipmunks Rodent Revenge. I feel like there's a chunk thing in there, like bloody chunks. <laughs> the, the chip chunks. I think go nuts. It sounds word. like ice cream. <laughs> oh yeah, and... actually, this is a good one. Dark summers. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's brilliant, right? Thank you so mm. much. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> and you can actually, there is, as you see here, there is an Alvin and the Chipmunks meet the Wolfman uh, movie. There's another like Alvin and the Chipmunk meet Frankenstein, I think. Plus. Four other Alvin and the Chipmunk movies you can find if you just say Alvin and the Chipmunks into your voice remote. And not to like point out like how absolutely brilliant my idea is, the creator <laughs> of the Chipmunks, Ross Bagdasarian Sr., um, he wrote that Witch Doctor song. I told the Witch Doctor oh. I was in love with you, bump, bump, bump. The origin of the Chipmunks was the ooh ee ooh ah ah was him, his voice sped up. And then he re-recorded it with all chipmunk voices. So he created the chipmunks, he created that song, it all comes together in a horrifying story. Did he story. also write the one I one horn flying purple people eater song? Because I feel like they're very similar. He did not. <laughs> it, it, it came about in a time where uh, novelty songs were very popular, right. like Monster Mash and all of that. But mm. it's not um, like when, when Chubby Checker wrote the twist and then he was like, let's twist again. Let's twist <laughs> yes. three more times. How about like more we did twists? last summer? <laughs> twist, twist, twist harder. <laughs> loved it. We all loved it. I know what you twisted last summer. <laughs> um, Gordon, I'm very excited to hear about your. Yeah, close us out, Gordon. Okay, please. so my, my theme for the afternoon. Uh, is going to be, uh, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but when I was young, we lived in Indonesia for a couple of years, uh, which was a very weird place to be as a youngster interested in pop culture before the internet. So, you know, we, Indonesian TV was eight hours a day, all Indonesian language with the exception of half an hour of news and half an hour of like maybe an American cartoon like Pac-Man or something, something weird. So when somebody would come back from the States, we'd be like, what's, what's happening? What's everybody excited about? And they'll be like, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, or like it was, it was a it was a weird time. Uh, and the one thing was Care Bears. Everybody was talking about Care Bears, so we all like all the kids started to get super into Care Bears when we were little. So I know more about the Care Bears than I maybe should. Like like right there, we got Funshine Bear, we got Grumpy Bear. I think that Strongheart Elephant, who's one of the Care Bear cousins, 
Uh, but the interesting thing about the Care Bears is they live in Carolot, which is a, a magical place in the clouds. Uh, and when they need to, to defend care interests around the world, uh, they have a little maneuver called the Care Bear Stare, uh, which is a stare, which you do with your eyes, but it makes a beam of pure white hot energy uh, emerge from their tummies. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, uh, but they're so adorable, who gives a darn? But yeah, you've got uh, Tenderheart Bear, you've got Funshine Bear, you've got Love A Lot Bear, you've got uh, Friendship Bear, like all like the wonderful emotions of the world. <laughs> um, all the positive emotions, actually, is what I meant to say. With the exception mm. of Grumpy, the Care Bears, it, it's similar to the Smurfs, because there was like the one, one Smurf was always ticked off. Uh, but <laughs> aside from Grumpy Bear, they're all positive. So clearly, what happened to the other emotions? You know, are there a seven deadly sins of Care Bears that Grumpy could maybe get along with? Is there a Sloth Bear or a Lust Bear or an Envy Bear? So my idea <laughs> is for the Scare Bears, uh, mm. the exact opposite. Blood for thirsty, angry, you know, they don't get any of the attention. They have their own Care Bear stare uh, coming out of their tummies, but it doesn't just like make people happy. Oh, no, no. It disintegrates them. Yeah. The Scare, the scare Bear Terror. The Scare Bear Terror. Oh, <laughs> ah. Dark <laughs> Summers. I know, right? Come on. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just a wealth of great ideas over no. here. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anywho, so it would basically be the 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 opposite of the Care Bears. Our Scare Bears uh, would, you know, instead of you know making kids feel warm and snuggly at night, it you know lurks in their closet and uh, makes, love it. makes them unalive. <laughs> uh, makes them unalive. That's all. I, I want. I want to hear more about more bears. Oh, you want me to list more bears? What's the nighttime yeah. one called? I was talking to my friend nighttime about bear. Care Bears the other day. Nighttime, of course. <laughs> it's the only one what's I the, remember what's people the bear actually... at, at bedtime. Who? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah it's the only one I remember people actually having like a like an actual bear. Like I, everyone had it to go to sleep with. You know, I that legitimately their had about <laughs> seventeen Care Bears. Oh, because okay, so when you lived in Indonesia, you would visit Singapore, and Singapore was the place that had like like modern toys so they would have like a toys r us and you could get he-man or transformers or care bears and it was like it, being in heaven uh and then back to indonesia where they didn't have any cool toys could you get mighty max and Polly pockets because that was really all i was interested in that was a little after my time <laughs> me too i just I'm recently old. saw that teddy ruxpin is back did you, either of you had a teddy ruxpin um i, I did remember yeah him. i love teddy ruxpin yeah he like he had like a flying a boat vessel of some sorts and hung out with like a, a must mustachioed man i just remember like didn't he have a tape that went in his back that was he all did I yeah he that, popped out the tape and put it yeah, in and then his eyes and his thing. mouth moved yeah they, they could have given that's him a terrifying. plane <laughs> they could have given him a flying plane why give him a flying boat because it's far more thing. imagine it like it's whimsical know, imagination. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Well, uh, there is no release date yet for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Um, we're hopeful that it's soon. But if you want to check out all the other shows and movies we just talked about, say what to watch into your voice remote. And write us directly if you want to kickstart any of these ideas. Yes. We're ready. <laughs> yeah. Be Prepare ready. to shell Be out ready. some money for... Yeah. Dark well, Summers doesn't months. come cheap. Dark Summers doesn't come cheap. <laughs> and I get some sort of co-creator credit on that because, Do you, you know, know, I think so. <laughs>